Today we're going to talk about why sugar is so deadly in terms of weight gain and type 2 diabetes and much worse than potentially any other carbohydrate that's out there. And it's coming right up. When we talk about sugar from a scientific standpoint, there's lots of different sugars other than what we think about in terms of table sugar. Those are the things that generally end in O's, like glucose, fructose, and things like milk sugar, which is lactose. When we talk about carbohydrates, they are generally long chains of glucose. So when you're talking about rice, potatoes, flour, like bread or pasta, for example, those are mostly glucose. When we talk about blood sugar, we talk about blood glucose. And that's one of the reasons why eating highly refined carbohydrates like uh, bread can raise your blood glucose very high because you're eating long chains of glucose. The minute they get broken down, the glucose level in the blood goes up. So that's why low carbohydrate diets can be very effective in the treatment of type 2 diabetes because you're eating fats and proteins as opposed to glucose. However, there's another sugar which we think about is sucrose, which is table sugar. We use it in baking, we use it in many types of things, and that's not glucose. It's actually a combination of one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. They are slightly different in terms of their structure, but they are both classified as sugars, as are things like lactose. Fructose is naturally found also in fruit, and in fact is one of the sweetest sugars that can be around. For many, many years, people thought fructose was actually healthy for you. Um, in 1986, for example, the uh, F F FDA said that there was no conclusive evidence that sugar demonstrates a hazard. Even as recently as 2006, the American Diabetes Association said you can substitute sucrose for any other carbohydrate in the meal plan. So that was meaning that fructose wasn't particularly bad for you because remember, sucrose is one glucose, one fructose. That glucose is the same as any other glucose, but the fructose is very different. The question is why it's so bad for you. It doesn't uh, raise the glycemic index because the blood glucose doesn't go up when you eat fructose because that's a completely different type of sugar. And the other thing is that it's very sweet and it's found naturally in fruit. So for many years, people thought it was quite uh, healthy for you to substitute fructose for glucose. Um, recently, though, it's become very clear that this has been a very bad swap. There's been a lot of talk about high fructose corn syrup and how that is very bad for you. In the mid-2000s, studies such as the Nurses Health Study in 2004 started to demonstrate uh, conclusive evidence that fructose is probably much worse than regular glucose. This uh, nurse's health study was run by the Harvard uh, Medical Center, and it followed many thousands of nurses, documented their habits, and compared them to what happened. When they looked at sugar-sweetened beverages, for example, from 1991 to 1999, they looked at the correlation between weight gain and whether people drank sugar-sweetened beverages regularly. You can see that both those that did drink it and that didn't drink it gained on average uh, about two kilos uh, over that period of time. Um, and it was, was true whether they drank a little bit of soda or a lot of soda. However, what's more interesting is that when you switch from drinking less than one per week to more than one per day, the weight gain almost doubled. When you did the opposite, when you went from consistently drinking more than one a day to less than one a week, the weight gain practically vanished. So there was clearly a correlation, which was more than just calories between sugar sweetened beverages and weight gain. And the true, this was also true for type two diabetes. So if you look at the number of sugar sweetened beverages uh, the nurses drank per month, as you drank more and more of these uh, sugar sweetened beverages, the risk of type two diabetes simply goes up and up and up. And this is, 
um, especially bad because, of course, the two go together, but the type 2 diabetes puts you at very high risk of other diseases like heart diseases and strokes. The question is, why is the fructose so especially bad for you, much more than the glucose? Both are molecules of sugar, both are sweet, both have roughly the same number of calories. The difference is the way that the fructose is metabolized, and glucose can be used by every cell in the body. So if you're eating um, 50 grams of carbohydrate, say uh, a slice of bread or something like that, all of your cells in your body, your heart, your liver, your brain, all of it can use glucose. So if you weigh 180 pounds, all 180 pounds of your body can metabolize that glucose. This is not true, however, for fructose. When you eat the same amount of fructose, none of your body, except for the liver, can actually metabolize that fructose. So your, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, they can't use that fructose. In fact, the only place that it can go is straight into the liver. And when it goes into the liver, what happens is that it turns into fat. Looking at this diagram, what you see is that the fructose is absorbed through the intestines, goes straight into the liver. So instead of all 180 pounds of body using up the glucose, you have maybe five pounds of the liver metabolizing that fructose. And it can get turned into glucose. However, if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates or if you're eating sucrose, which already has glucose, your body doesn't need more of that glucose. So that's one way that it can be metabolized that's blocked off. The only other way it can go is get turned into triglycerides, which is a process called lipogenesis or the creation of new fat. What you get is fatty liver, and then the body tries, the liver tries to export that uh, fat out through VLDL, so you get central adiposity and the metabolic syndrome. So in fact, the fructose is much, much worse for you because there's simply no way to get rid of it all as opposed to using the, the, the rest of the body to metabolize it. Several studies had shown very early on that when you compare glucose to fructose, you get much more of this insulin resistance because of that fatty liver. Um, we talked about fatty liver in the past and how it's very closely related to insulin resistance, which then causes type 2 diabetes. It turns out that if you look, do a insulin tolerance test, comparing a dose of glucose to a dose of fructose, you get about 25% worsening of insulin resistance. In 2009, in the uh, JCI, they published a very interesting study where again, they looked at giving people glucose versus giving them fructose. And even these normal, healthy volunteers, when they get the fructose, their blood glucose levels goes up to a point that you can actually diagnose insulin resistance. So the high insulin resistance then causes high insulin levels in order to try to metabolize it. You get the fatty liver, and there that starts you on the pathway towards uh, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and weight gain. So when you're looking at the fructose versus the glucose, you have to recognize that the fructose, the way that it's metabolized, is, makes it much much more likely to get turned into fat, to get turned into the bad type of fat, which is the liver fat, um, and that causes the insulin resistance, which gives you this very high rate of type 2 diabetes. So really, uh, the, the key if you're starting to lose weight is really to cut down those sugary foods, especially the added sugars. Even the fruits, which can be very high in fructose, sometimes are not your best friend if you're trying to lose weight or, or manage type 2 diabetes. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week.